Hi guys, my name is Sierra and welcome to my channel. I have decided that I want to start documenting my nursing experience journey of applying for nursing schools, kind of just the application process, applying for scholarships, prerequisite courses that were required, how everything works, you know, and this obviously varies depending on the state that you live in or even the school that you're applying for. I want to share that with all of you guys. I often find myself going to YouTube to find out information or just searching nursing videos just because I think it's so much fun. I kind of would like this to just be a positive space for other people that have the same interests to come to and share with me and ask me questions and I can ask you questions and just an overall happy place to be. I don't know exactly what I'm doing, so bear with me, but I think that this is going to be a lot of fun. So today I am actually leaving for one of my favorite towns because tomorrow I have a nursing orientation with this school. It's a couple hours away, but it's definitely my number one. It's the number one school I want to get into because I'm going to be applying for a couple. So fingers crossed. So I'm going to head there. One of my best friends lives there. Stay the weekend there. We're going to go to the orientation tomorrow morning. I will obviously share the information I learned with you guys. I'm about to head out. Got a couple hour drive ahead of me and I'm going to bring you guys along. Good morning, you guys. It is 8.30 right now. I am on the college campus that the nursing orientation is taking place at. I'm hoping to get a lot of questions I have answered just so I can kind of make a game plan about what I need to get done over the next couple of months. And then obviously I will share any insight I gain with you guys. It's crazy being here. I don't know if you've ever felt this way, like been to a town that you're not really connected to in any way. Like I have a couple of friends here and I've spent a couple weekends here but there's nothing really tying me here and yet it just feels it just feels like home and I mean obviously my home is where my family's at and the place that I actually live but there's just this sense of peace I get here that I don't know how to explain and almost like like I'm just supposed to live here that's how I feel. I've never really felt that way before. I think that that sounds insane, but I don't know. Have you ever felt that way when you come to a town? Something is drawing you here. I hope everything works out. Anyways, ramble over. I'm going to head inside now. <laughs> to stumble upon this goodwill that was right down the road which is literally amazing so i went in there but i'm going to be meeting up with my friend to grab lunch with her and then probably run a couple errands then i promise i will sit down with you guys and fill you in on all the deets and go over everything that we need to go over so yeah I'm so excited to finally sit down and chit chat with you about everything I learned from the nursing orientation as well as information that I've gathered on my own from doing plenty of research and communicating with several different nursing schools. I just want to preface this that every nursing school you apply to is going to be different. Their application process is going to be different. Their prerequisite course load is going to be different. If you live in a place like I do, which is Oregon, um, it's really competitive here and so typically you apply to more than one program. It's really important to kind of hone in on the programs that you're going to apply for and make sure you know what you need to accomplish for each program to succeed when you're applying for them. Also so you're not spending more money taking classes that you don't necessarily need to take. Every school is different. A lot of things are going to vary depending on if you're applying for a community college and so you're going to be graduating with your associates or you're applying for a university and you're going to be graduating with your bachelor's. Those are all things to take into account 
One thing that I was really surprised to see when I initially began doing my research is that the prerequisite course lists, like classes that you need to complete when applying, are different. And I, I would have thought that they would be the same across the board because you're applying for nursing school, so everything would be the same. But that's not necessarily the case. That's why it's really important to see what classes you need to do to apply for each program because they vary, they change year to year. There's a lot of different factors. So I'm going to jump into the prerequisites that need to be done. It takes people a year to two and a half years to complete the required courses. And it all depends on if you're working, if you have children, if you're a full-time student, obviously it plays a part in how long it's gonna take you to complete these courses. And one thing that I wanna mention, I'm gonna touch more on it when I get into the science classes that need to be done. A lot of schools don't necessarily let you double up on certain science classes. Like you have to take them consecutively. You can't take them simultaneously. And this can become problematic, especially if you wait last minute to do your science courses. I will go into more detail about that in a couple minutes. You can find your prerequisite course list when you go to the school that you're applying for. They usually have a list that's available. The schools will say that you need to have 80% of this completed before time of application submission. And it's kind of a silent rule of thumb here in Oregon that you typically have all your required classes completed before you apply because it's so dang competitive. In Oregon, we do our classes based on terms. I know some schools do semesters. I hope this doesn't confuse anybody. Some classes might be split up differently depending on the state that you live in. The first classes that you need to do are your basic core classes. You have English and math. I believe there are three English classes. As far as math goes, one algebra class. Depending on how you place into the math, sometimes it may take more than one math class if you don't place high enough into college level math. And there is a statistics course that needs to be done. And that needs to be completed ultimately to get your bachelor's. Continuing on, you have to have nutrition completed, psychology of human development, which is basically the development of newborn to geriatrics. Another class is concepts in computing, which makes sure that you are familiar with Windows computer because that's the type of computer you're using at the hospital. You're proficient in Microsoft and Excel, all that good stuff. And then you have other electives that are kind of filler classes that you need to complete, which can be sociology, economics, varying psychology courses, things like that. And then we get into the good stuff, your science classes. I want to tell you, if you haven't done them yet, it's really important to start on them early because they are really time consuming. And if you do all these other easier classes first and you're stuck with all your sciences, you're going to be sad. You're going to be very sad with yourself and your decisions. There are six science classes that I had to do for multiple schools that I'm applying for. Some of the other ones only require five, but the overall point is that it's a handful of science classes. So the first one is a basic chemistry course and then a biology course. It was intro to genetics and then microbiology, which I thought was like the most interesting out of all of them. It was really cool. And then you have your anatomy and physiology. It's split up into three courses where I live, ANP1, ANP2, and ANP3. These classes are extremely time consuming because not only do you have a lecture, but you also have a lab. So typically it's about four hours twice a week in school. The science classes are the reason why it may take people longer to finish their prerequisite coursework. Because at the beginning of the video, I told you it could take a year to two and a half years. And this is the reason why. Also because a lot of schools I know don't have the option of completing these classes online. So I mentioned about doubling up on classes and how it doesn't necessarily work. And I'm gonna explain what I mean. Something that was really fun for me to find out was that a lot of times when you look at a class that you need to take, you can't even enroll in it because there's a prior class that you have to take to even enroll in that class. And this is how some of the sciences are where I went to school at, you couldn't even start your anatomy and physiology series until you completed biology. And then you couldn't start biology until you had certain writing and math classes done. A problem I see with people is that if you wait last minute to do your science classes, you think that you can double up and take two science classes at once. 
This depends on the school. I know some schools allow it and some schools don't. Where I live, you can't necessarily do that. It depends on the science course. For example, it would be impossible to take biology and anatomy one together because you have to have biology completed before you can even sign up to take anatomy. However, it is possible to take anatomy two the same time that you're taking anatomy three. Those are kind of things that I didn't realize. I feel like they would have been useful to know. And taking those classes simultaneously are, are difficult. It's a lot of information. Going into school, I definitely wasn't prepared for how much time I would have to spend outside of the classroom to do well in those classes. And it's so important to do well because you're given this plethora of knowledge that helps you build a foundation with information that you're expected to know when you enter a nursing school. You know, you're expected to be very familiar with the different human body systems and how they work. And obviously you go into more depth into that in nursing school. But if you're cramming and not doing really well in these classes and not retaining the information, just is going to bite you in the butt <laughs> because I've been there. And when I cram before a test, it doesn't work. I mean, maybe it works, but it's so stressful and I don't retain the information and is counterproductive. So it's so important to do well in the classes and try to make them interesting and fun. And it can be hard in the beginning, especially because it's kind of a new way of learning. It feels like you're literally learning a foreign language. Like that's how I felt. Not only have you never heard these words before, but you have to learn how to pronounce them. You have to know what they mean and you have to know how to spell them. You have to understand the concepts. It can be a lot once you kind of find your groove and how to study and what works for you because what works for you can be different than what works for a classmate. Then that's when I think that you truly succeed. Your time management is spent better. So that is basically all the prerequisites that are required where I live. Again, I want to reiterate every school is different. So make sure you know what is expected of you and the classes that you need to have done when you are applying. Once you have made it this far and you're finally ready to apply, you will notice that the application process is different depending on the school too. Typically, they are all a point-based system, but that system is subjective to the school. So I'm thinking of two different schools in my head. I'm gonna give you an example of how different they are. So one of the colleges here takes your GPA into account and I believe every school, of course, you have to have a 3.0 and above, but that isn't competitive. I would say the average accepted GPA where I live is a 3.8 to a 4.0, so fun stuff. This initial school I'm thinking of, they take your GPA into account. Based on your GPA, you get a certain amount of points for that. You are able to receive more points by having these following attributes. If you are a veteran, if you've done a volunteer work at your hospital or other places, if you already have prior healthcare experience, especially if you've been a CNA, an MA, or an EMT, then even more points are granted if you've spent over 500 hours in the workplace. If you have all of your prerequisite coursework done and it was completed at the current school that you're applying for, they like that. <laughs> if you're possibly fluent in a foreign language, if you have a prior degree, if you've previously applied, there's a bunch of different factors, but those are the main ones at this school that I'm thinking of. Based on that, when you apply, if you reach certain criteria, you get more points and then you have a certain amount of points that are associated with your application. Before I move on, I'm gonna talk about this other school. This next school I'm thinking of, your GPA isn't even taken into account. You just have to have like above a 3.5, I believe. They just want you to have all your coursework completed. You can't even apply unless you have it all completed. There's these classes that are called supporting classes, which are certain kind of elective classes that they want you to complete. And if you have all of those completed, you get a certain amount of points. And then there's two other parts. You have to take two exams, which I'm sure a majority of you are familiar with. That would be the T's exam and the HSRT. The T's exam stands for Test of Essential Academic Skill. And from what I know about it, it is an aptitude test with your four core subjects. It's timed, you complete it, you get a score, then you get a certain amount of points when applying. The HSRT test, from what I understand about it, is a critical thinking test and it consists of you reading passages and then answering questions based on that. This school takes your scores from those two tests, you get a certain amount of points, 
and you submit that with your application. Once you've finally submitted your application with your records, all of your hard work is finally coming down to this important point. You can potentially be moved on to the second round. The second round, obviously, again, varies depending on the school. And some may not even have a second round. They might just look at the points and then accept the top applicants who have the highest amount of points. Most of the schools have a second round where I live and it can consist of an interview or an essay. Those are the only two that I really know of. Interview is, you know, sit down in person, ask you questions and they do time you. And then the essay, it's timed and then you get a prompt and then you submit it. Then from there, you anxiously, anxiously await to see if you've been accepted. After all of your hard, excruciatingly painful hours of studying and fun couple of years, they make it available where I live to see previous applicants' average scores that got accepted. So you can kind of compare and contrast and hopefully have an idea. And then hopefully you get accepted and then you're in nursing school and then you're so happy. Where I'm at at this point is I'm actually completed with all my prerequisites and I am applying for programs this winter and they begin in the fall, in September. I have a lot to do. I have to take the T's exam, which there's only one school in Oregon that requires this, but if anybody has some studying tips or advice on the test, I know there's so much information online, but I would love to actually hear it from somebody uh, please comment down below i would really 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 appreciate it and then maybe in the future i can do a video on tips and tricks i learned to get through a and p in my science classes i'm gonna be completely honest i was not prepared for the amount of time that i needed to put into the science classes it can be a real struggle if you are poor with your time management and aren't paying attention and anyways i hope this video was helpful to somebody and if you've made it this far wow thank you for watching <laughs> again i just want to reiterate every school is going to be different when you're applying thank you so very much for watching you are amazing and i can't wait to continue this channel and see where it goes and just have this be a positive place for all of us to come to i hope you have a lovely rest of your day or night or wherever you are and I will see you in my next video.